Well, listen, Kyra, you're in the grace period where you get the extra credit, but right now I need you to set up your screens the way I have and uh, just keep your camera on the whole time. I'm on the cell phone. Stop texting me. Thank you. How are you? Did you say, uh, listen, Kyra? I'm on the cell phone. You're on the cell phone? Oh, goodness. Yeah. When you get your laptop fixed? No, my laptop not broke. It's at my auntie's house, and she still has the body check. So oh. she breaks. Okay, you're gonna need that because you usually I'm on not. point with these. You usually one of my star students. I need you to get that. Yeah. But, uh, when you can, just try to stay in class while you're with the phone and, and do as much as you can. All okay. the videos are in the library. What were you about to say? Okay. Okay. I'm be right back, Tyler. Okay, Sankara, you got about eight minutes. It's cool. Hey, Dajay, uh, if we're in a uh, grace period of six more minutes before we start, so you might set your screens up uh, the way I have. Who's coming in the room now? Lisa Brown is here. Okay. Lisa, this is going to be easy, so you might as well just get started. It's the same thing because it's all math today, but it's, the equations are a little different. I'm still going to go through the synchronous problem, but you got to hit start because you already know what to expect. Dante's here. All right, just make sure everybody's camera stay on the entire time of class. I see everybody. You yes. three different problems this time. Uh, you talking about the synchronous problems there? So there's only one synchronous problem and two asynchronous problems. Oh no, man, I see. I see. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, let me uh, take attendance real quick. Uh, who is this coming in the room now? Oh, okay, this is Miss Terry under a different name. Okay, welcome to class. Are you on a computer, Miss Terry? Yeah, I'm on my desk, Apple computer. We had to update one. Awesome, awesome, cool. All right, so just set your screens up, Miss Terry. We're about to get started in two more minutes. So everybody should be setting their screens up the same way I have. Uh, let me do attendance real quick. Uh, everyone needs to keep their cameras on to uh, basically keep their attendance score, which is present. <laughs> so uh, let's see, Lisa's present. Lee Carter is absent. Mr. Champagne is absent. Khalil Connor is absent. Mr. Davis is absent. Ms. Franklin is absent. Ms. Lightu is here. I don't see Gabriel yet. He's absent. Daje is here. Joel is absent. Lamar Porter is absent. Christian Puentes is absent. Uh, Ariana Richardson is absent. Ms. Terry is present. Jamel Tyler is absent. Alexis Valdez is absent. Mr. Wallace is absent. All right. So we got that out the way. We got a minute and 30 seconds. What did you say, Terry? You know how to um, put two screens on the Apple computer? It's the same procedure. You you basically, uh, you want to resize on an Apple. You have bubbles, I think. So you know how to present. I could probably walk you through that. But you uh, click on the, the one bubble that sizes it to a smaller screen. And then you just grab the edges if you have a mouse or a um, an Apple-based mouse. You can grab the size, click and drag, and resize. So you should have three options here. It's no real. It's not a real difference on the Apple computer, but they're color coded. You got to figure out which one resizes it, and then just like I did, grab a tab, drag over, and resize the screen. It'll take some time to do it. Um, uh, everybody should. Go I'm, ahead, telling, I'm telling to do that, but this the this the new um. Apple computer, so I don't really know how to work this. Okay, well, maybe is your, your parent around? Maybe they can help you resize it. Otherwise, you got to work from tabs if you can't get it going. All right, I'm going to go get my baby. Okay. But be quick. We're about to do our norms, Mel, so you can participate. Let's see here. Okay, so in a few seconds, I did attendance already. Let me make sure it's saved. It did save. All right. So that is the grace period where students can come in and still be counted uh, to some degree present and on time. But that time is left. So let's jump into our norms. And, um, I'm not going to go to Terry first. I got to go to Moore first. So Daje, let me blow this up. Can you read the first... No one has the right to have another question. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Terry's not back, right? Uh, Lisa, can you read number two? Education in the class on my sacred. Sinkaira, are you back? Can you read number three? No? Yeah, I'm All back right. yet. Oh, she's not back yet? Okay. Well, thank you, whoever that was. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go back to Daje. Can you read number three, dear? We have never behaved in a way that's great after our law school or our family. Thank you. Lisa, number four. Uh, and it's Shell Academy of Southwest students, always a lady or gentleman. All right. Uh, Ms. Terry, are you back? Some Kyra left. Okay. That's a no? Okay. So, Dajay, go ahead and read the next one. Oh, my God, Mr. Tyler. We take pride in the Shell Academy of Southwest. Why are you saying, oh, my God? We got to do this. <laughs> it's somebody else trying to say I'm always saying it first every time. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a break because we gotta read stuff in the chat and everything else. So I'm gonna give you a quick break and I'm gonna do it. So the five academic norms. We respect the opinions of others and we should always respect it because you know everybody's different on this earth. Miss Terry, you back? I see your microphone came on. Yeah. Can you read all five of these norms real quick? Because I was calling on you. The academic. <laughs> 
We respect, we respect the opinions of others. We respect the culture of the classroom. We are attentive and participate. We have high expectations of ourselves, our prison, our teachers. We are here to focus on preparing ourselves for post-secondary endeavors. Excellent, Ms. Terry, thank you. Okay, so uh, Gabe, welcome to class. Uh, you just got here. Let me make sure I mark him present. I got Terry. Okay, and then we're waiting on Sinkara to come back. Okay, so let's jump into today's assignment, right? And it's quick and sweet if you follow along. Uh, one quick note, I'm gonna put a couple of things in the chat before we get started, but there's this Facebook drawing, uh, easy $100. All you gotta do is, uh, if you see it in your teacher's class, whoever uh, shared it with you, uh, go to the Facebook page, put who shared it with you and subscribe to the page. Uh, depending upon which student does this the most or when we do the drawing, which is next Friday, uh, I think that's October 2nd, we will find out basically uh, in townhouse, I'm assuming, who won that $100. So definitely, definitely check that out. I think Lisa and a few other students uh, took advantage of it. I saw you, uh, your, your messages because I also helped manage the page. All right. So this is the link in SB. You know, scroll down until you see this line. And uh, let me get Lisa. No, let me get Gabe, because Gabe didn't, he just got here. Oh, Joel, see, here they come. I got to go back and do attendance. So while I'm re uh, correcting the attendance, Gabriel, can you read uh, what's in the chat? Okay, Joel just arrived. And mark that. Ignorance problems need to be completed. Long and ready to yeah, present tomorrow in class. Asynchronous okay, problems yeah, have yeah, to be completed as homework and we'll be checked tomorrow in class as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He did that and he had a lot going on in the background. Um, so the next part we're going to read out loud. I'm going to have uh, who's who just came in the classroom, Joel. So Joel, I want you to read what's in the chat next. Because Lisa and Daje pretty much held down the fort. So I'm calling on you guys because y'all just got here. I want everybody to get these points. Is your microphone working, Joel? Can you see the chat? Oh, he left. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, Lisa, can you read this portion? Sure. Um, what you need me to read, Tyler? Oh, well, hold on, Lisa. Okay, he's back. That was quick. Uh, what's in the? Do you see what's in the chat, sir? Or no, you just came back. I gotta put it back. Yeah. Okay, I gotta put it back. All right, one second. Copy this. Put this here. Because I know when students leave, what's in the chat disappears. All right, there we go. Light two just came back. Well, go ahead, Joel. Let's uh finish this off. Um, what are you read to, or you want me to read everything? I want you to read from please remember all the way down. All right. Please remember to get maximum credit, all calculation such steps for the final answers to the synchronous and asynchronous problems need to be uploaded to EDSB via the same format that we've been doing since the start of the quarter. This format is shown in the video. Type the Google Doc converted to PDF. Please stay out safe out there, Zen. Thank hey, you, sir. Hey. Yeah. So yes. I had I, not too long ago, or last week, I submitted three, or it was Sunday. I submitted three assignments I was missing before eight, but I I put them in there like as a link, and it still like sent you the file. I'm pretty sure, but that's because right. it, um, I don't know. It it was acting. Uh, I was doing it for my phone, so I couldn't <laughs> save it to a PDF. But that's the credit for those. I saw those, Joel. They was there was the ones that turn red, and um, I when they red, it's incomplete. Meaning you did turn it on time. I saw that, sir. But you still have to go back and submit a PDF if you can. Or uh, what I saw is, which is why I didn't want y'all to use that that format. You got to find a way to turn on the permissions of the document. Because when I checked your documents, all of them, it said need permission, and um, I can't see what you did, sir. <laughs> so right. you got time to still finish it, Joel. You just got to submit it correctly. So all I right? can still so, submit those three. Huh? So I can still submit those three and still get full credit. Yes, because you I saw they was submitted on time, but you didn't submit PDFs. So if you could right, cool. get yeah, your I computer, download them, computer. them and put them back in correctly, and you'll right, get the credit. Cool. All right, but OK, so let's get into today's assignment. Let me close this window because they had dogs barking and stuff.
Okay, sorry about that. Uh, it's one of the drawbacks of being at home teaching. Uh, you get outside sounds. Now, everybody should see my screen. I, a reminder, cameras have to stay on the entire time. This is not my rule. This is what schools are doing because we got students doing all sorts of things. Just keep your camera on so you don't get frustrated with me and uh, try to you know follow along with the instruction. Today's video will be available around, I want to say 4 p.m. I'm, I'm trying to stay on top of that. So you guys, and if you don't get the video, you can contact me and I'll send you the YouTube link in case you can't find it in Esby. I know it's a lot of things you had to go through to find it, but it's usually in your library, okay? Uh, quick notes, today's word of the day and term of the day. So I told you before, what is the word of the day? Well, I said, all you gotta do is look at what's in the brackets and you'll know what the classroom term is. The word of the day, which is used through all, all the school for all the teachers, I will be providing as well. But I'm asking just for the term of the day for today's class. What could it be? Now, you can type it in the chat, and you'll get about 10 points of uh, participation points. This is in class work is where this grade goes. So who knows what today's word of the day or a classroom term is? And while you're doing that, I'm going to be establishing my Google Doc. But the person, Lisa got it. OK, Lisa took it. So it's always in the brackets, guys and gals. Um, you want to make sure you're in your Google Doc. And we're going to begin creating our document. So I went to Google Docs. I'm going to go blank. Start a new Google Doc like we've always done. This, this, this setup, this routine should be easy for all you guys, no matter if you're on a cell phone or Apple or PC. You got Google access. So just make sure you're logged in to get that access. Next, we're going to do what? We got to name our document. So it's due now. And then today's date is the 24th of September, 2020. All right. Okay. Now we need our header. You put your name there and then put the date again. I'll be inconsistent because when you open a document up, you're not going to see the date if you didn't put it. That's just the name of the document above. So you got to put it again. Period is three. We're like at the middle of the day almost, right? We got about one of the two more periods and then we're out of here, right? It's the third. And this is intro. You guys would be considered robotic students, but the technical term is intro to engineering. As Lisa just showed us, the, basically the word of the day is inside of the, t uh, the link here for the assignment. It says solve is your title of the page. And you're going to do it exactly the way I'm doing to get full credit. Solve for the ordered here. And in brackets, you got to put that there because that's a reminder to you. Now, there is one other thing I'm going to add to this because some students didn't pay attention to the rules. He was like, well, I got the word of the day, yeah, in the chat. But I kept telling you guys, it has to be in your document. So I'm going to help you out with some prompts so you don't forget to put that in there when you're all done. The two prompts are, like I did uh, in the earlier class, let me just take this for you, is word of the day is and classroom term of the day is. And I'll put both of them in the chat in a moment, but I do want you to put this in your document for today's assignment. So you'll know to go back and fill out the word of the day's definition and the classroom term of the day's definition. Because I was looking at some of these reports and people are just not taking advantage of that 25 points for just having these two. That's 25 points on top of the assignment. So I'm really trying to help everybody, but you got to remember to fill that out. So let me zoom this in. And let me put the words in the chat while you take a moment to get your document ready. Today's word of the day is, I mean, classroom term of the day is linear equations, like Lisa said. And the classroom term of the day, or word of the day, I'm sorry, for throughout the whole school, is anomaly. So, did I spell anomaly right? Let me make sure I spelled that right. Anomaly. A, not an O. Okay. Let me correct that. And so the word is the word of the day. Just to correct that is a n a m o m a l. Did I do that right? There it is. Yeah, I spelled it right. 
Okay, so everybody got their uh, documents set up? You're going to need it. There you go. And that's the correct way to spell it. All right, so we got that out of the way, but the ways you can get 25 extra points. Now, you can't just put the words here at word of the day and, and, and think you're done. You got to look up what those words mean and put its definition next to each word. All right, so I'm not going to do that for you. That's 25 points. I'll just put that here in case you forget. <laughs> That's 25, so plus 25 extra points. These go towards your uh, in-class work points that help you out towards the end of the quarter. We have midterms coming up, I want to say around October, which is like not too far away. And um, we want to make sure that you have enough points so if you're like close to a, a D or close to a C, those points buffer in and help you. All right, now let's go through agenda for the agenda for today, today's problem. Let me get somebody to read it in one moment. So let's see here. Let me grab this. And uh, did we read that already? No, we did that part. Yeah, we read that. We just got to do the question. So we're on time. I'm going to take this from here. And I just want you to read, let's see, who can I get, who hasn't gone yet? Gabriel already did it. Let me look at my chat and see who's in here. Uh, Sinkaira, I need you to read what's in the chat, dear. She just got back. Get some points. You said do here. what? Can you read what's in the chat, please? Okay. One second. Sure. Solve for the order pair x, y using this system of equation so substitution method. Keep going there. Equation one. Oh, okay. Hold on. Equation one, uh, 24 divided by 2, x uh, minus 20 divided by 2, y equals 18. Equation two, negative 448 divided by 4, x plus 30 divided by 2, y equals uh, negative 12 divided by 2. Cool. All right, so let's jump into the problem, and then I'm going to do it differently this time because I, I, I showed you the simulations I want you guys to use, but uh, I want to do this first because we almost ran out of time last period with the simulations. Students had trouble. So I'm going to show you that at the end. If you got further questions, I'll, you know, I'll leave time where I stick around while I'm getting the video ready to answer those questions with the simulations. And the simulation just help you check your work. So first thing you want to do is take what uh, Sankara read and put it into your document like I've done. Okay. Next, you know, space it out a little bit because we got to do something else. Now, when you see equations with fractions, what's the first thing you should do? Who knows? You type it in the chat if you, you think you know it, and I'll give you 10 extra points. So what you do I do? Who said that? <laughs> it seems like Dazi put the answer, but someone else said, no, not like terms yet, Gabe. You're close. Sakara said it. Sakara said it? Okay. <laughs> but Dazi typed it. But uh, Sakara, you're absolutely right. We're going to do what is called redu reduction, or we're going to divide all those fractions out. So great job. And I think Dazi started us off. She said, it's 12, but it's 12 what, Dazi? I'm, I'm not picking on you, but I am making sure you get it 100% correct. They, there you go, Dazi. <laughs> 12x. And then it's going to be minus what? If you get these points. Oh, dang. Is that Dajay again? It, oh, she did the whole thing. Dang. Okay, thank you, Dajay. She's showing off. 10y equals 18. She's right. But what does this next equation look like? Who wants to tackle that? That's negative what? So you got to do 448 divided by 4x. What do you get? Dajay is on it. Yeah, 112. Negative 112. <laughs> so negative 112 X, right? Plus, you guys are going to do good on this quiz tomorrow, I see. What about 30 divided by 2? Oh, 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 she's putting everything in there. Okay, so hold on. She put, yeah, that's 15 Y. She moving out on me. So uh, she, she threw me off. 15 Y. Uh, what, what else, Dajay? Since you 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 on a 
you want to roll. You seem like you're just up and ready to do this. What about 12 over 2? That's an easy one. And it's negative, right? But she put, oh, Gabe got it that time. Six. Gabe was like, I could do that one. Yeah, negative six, Gabe. Pretty good. Okay, so that was the first step you want to do if you see fractions. Now, usually most of my quiz, I don't even include fractions. I put the fractions in there for participation points. So when you do your asynchronous problems, and let's take a pause and get our, our, our homework problems. Uh, where are they at? They're in Edsby. Hold on. So if we do, let me drag this over because I want that to be the first thing I see. If we go here, we have two more problems you have to do on your own. And they're homework problems. All these problems are due at 8 p.m. to get maximum credit. Uh, let me come down and put those in the, the Google Doc as well. And I don't do all these problems and you think, oh, we're done. That's 50% of your work. The other 50% is the asynchronous work. Both are due at 8 p.m. And I'm doing the first part, which you just show you the steps. But what we want to do is we're going to take the easiest equation, which is this one, right? And uh, we're going to use it to solve for, and I'm, I'm doing that because it's simple for you. If you just follow this procedure, take the first equation. So solve, let me write the instructions, solve for x, because I know everybody likes using x in their algebra, and equate in the reduced equation 1. Using algebra. All right, so with that said, we're going to take this equation from equation one that we reduced. We're going to use that to calculate or solve for x. Let's see what we do. Well, I'm going to take this equation and do it, uh, put it underneath because I want to start working on it. First thing I want to do is remove what? Let's see who has been practicing these problems. You do have a quiz on this. Okay, Terry says you'll be right back. Come right back because I don't want you missing those steps. I don't want to be calling on you not there. <laughs> so I can't, I can't do the work on his computer because this computer just retarded. <laughs> Did you figure out how to use it before you call it retarded, Terry? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like it's the new updated um Apple computer, so you don't really know how to work these things on here. Okay, okay, don't get frustrated. Just find your parent and have them help get it. Yeah, he tried to. He said that this computer don't do that, so I'm going to just watch the video right. before. Okay, okay, that's cool, too, but you, you, if you have a word processor, you can type it up still, and then just when you get a chance, convert it over. So he should have some type of text, um, you know, editor or word editor. It's on there. Uh, as I, I used to have a MacBook uh, or a couple of Mac products, but anyway, so, you know, try to get that fixed. Just check out the video to redo all the steps. So if nobody knows, oh, I just looked at the chat. Yes, Lisa. <laughs> this bulldog is on it. All right. So she said, hey, just put 10Y there because we're going to be doing algebra to get X by itself. So I'm going to put this in red because that was a change to our problem, right? What you do to one side of the equation, like Lisa said, on each side, and that's each side of the equal sign, by the way, you got to do to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to put this here underneath because we got a little more to go with it. A lot more, I should say, but we'll get done with it fast. So what cancels out? Well, you should know by now just this portion. Now, I really want you guys to get the hang of this because there's other math techniques I want to teach them on uh, Mathematics Thursdays. But substitution method has given a few people a real headache. Too many steps. It's not too many steps if you practice it. It's kind of like going and running a marathon and you never went out running every day to practice. All right, so we got rid of all that. I think this is highlighting and strike through. We remove that. Awesome. Okay, so now we're at a part where we simplify the equation down because we're getting x by itself, but we're not yet where x is by itself. So you see that 12x is like saying 12 times Joel. That just means, if I say 12 Joel, that means it's 12 times Joel or 12 times X, right? Don't get confused with X, Y, Z, or any of those. Those are just variables. So all I want to do is do the reverse of multiplication, and that's what? Division, right? But divide by what I don't want next to the X, and that's 12. But again, you're going to get tired of me saying this all day, probably in class, what you do to one side, 
you got to do to the other. So I'm going to put parentheses around this other side and make sure it divides by the 12, only the 12. Some students, please be careful. Look, I'm going to divide by 12x. Then you'll get one, and you just pretty much eliminated the x. So you ain't got nothing to solve for. So be careful when you're doing all that. But this, uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this equation. And I put this here. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and remove some things. I'm trying to zoom in for you guys so you can see everything. There we go. So I'm going to remove some things. Uh, this 12 is gone because it divided by the 12 underneath that we did to get x by itself. So we can cross that out. And all this over here on the other side of this x is gone because it cancels with that 12. But this problem, this part on the other side of the equation, it changes. So now you have 12 dividing into both of those elements. So it becomes pretty much this. It's going to be 18 divided by 12 and 10y divided by 12. All right, let's move on. Well, we know all these crossed outs are gone. That was just for our notes to be clean. And the same here. Now we got to divide out these numbers, and we can use Google to do so. So let's see what that becomes. We can use Google, we can use Symbolab, but if you don't feel like doing Symbolab or, or being neat with all that, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'm just saying, giving you ideas. And there's two more simulations I'm going to give you at the end. You can figure it out by typing it into Google. Make sure you type the equal sign first in Google, because if you don't, what will happen is Google will go and search for some crazy things. So put equal, it lets Google know, all right, I got to calculate something. And um, when we come to your document, the first one is 18 divided by 12. So let's see what that becomes. All right, and that's 1.5. All right, so if you want to do the long division by hand and you got your crunch for time, you just use the internet correctly. You can use it as your own personal calculator. So that is going to be, what do we say, 1.5, all right? So what about 10y divided by 12? That's easy. All you got to do is remember that it's just a 10 divided by 12, and you bring the y with you. Okay? I'm just cleaning up the document a little bit for us so you can see the plus in between it. So that's 10 divided by 12. Well, we just come over here, and I could just change this to a 10 and get what? 0 0.833333. We're not going to say all those threes. It's basically 0 0.83. It's a repeating three, but we're just going to say zero because in our classes, in your robotics, physics, uh, even computer science, is, is best not have all those meaning digits. You just want some, some type of accuracy. Precision comes later. So 0 0.83. I'm going to change this. And don't forget, Y is attached. So it's going to be it's 0 0.83, and then Y is there. Whew. Are we done, Mr. Tyler? No, not exactly, but we get in there. So let's bold this. And I'm going to set a clock for two, two hot minutes to let you get a moment to catch up. Stretch your legs, and then we're going to go on to the next steps because we're almost done with this. We're at the halfway mark of this problem. So take a moment, get that typed up or ready, and then uh, we're going to continue on in two more minutes. talk about that. I'm going to mention that again because we're not yet through with that.
We have directors. You, uh, you talking about what I typed up? Yeah. I was giving people time to catch up, but I'll I'll explain it again. Okay, so what did I type? That's what Gabe's getting at, right? Let me minimize this. So all I was doing is taking it to the next step with you guys. We found this, and this is only the partial solution for X. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I grade people's papers, they would think this is the end of X, and it's not. If you still have a Y in there, or if you have Y here and you have an X in there, you only got a partial solution, meaning half of the solution. You got to go back and find X. And uh, this brings me to my next thing. Did I do something wrong, Lisa? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got that, Lisa. Thanks. Um, what was I about to say? So what you want to do is make sure that you always come back and find your X and your Y. Now, I will give 20 points to someone if they can type in the chat what the old algebra joke is, just so you'll know why we're going through this. It's a very old one, too. I learned it when I was in engineering school. Who remembers what that joke is? Starts off with, hey, and then you have to finish the rest in the chat. Okay, so now substitute the partial solution above into the reduced equation. Oh, Gabriel got it. Wow, you remember it. Pretty cool. Gabe got the 20. Sikara <laughs> said, hey, algebra. Oh, almost, Sikara. All right, so now you got to substitute this partial solution here. We just discussed and highlighted into equation two that we reduced. And we have that here. So I'm going to take that from here because that's what we reduced it for. You imagine doing this problem with all those fractions, y'all? It'd be a headache because we have to find least common denominators and such. So I was like, just divide it, then work on it. Okay, so this equation we're using, this equation two is reduced form. Copy this and come down one. Now we got to substitute, right? So in order to substitute, we got to take this value inside of x and place it inside of the x for equation two. That's the substitution portion of doing the math. So I'm going to put that here. I'll clean it up for you guys. Okay. All I did, I substituted. Come back. And uh, turn this off. Clean that up. Sinkara is back. Okay, good. So now we got to use something called distribution method. And that's where that 112 on the outside is multiplied to the inside of the parentheses by the 1.5 and the 0.83y. You gotta multiply it into both. So let's do that in steps. The first one is 112, negative 112 multiplied by 105, 1.5. We can do that here as well. That's a negative 112 divided by 1.5, right? Okay. Not divide, I'm sorry, multiply, not divide it. What am I thinking about? Multiply, there we go. That doesn't look right. There we go. So that gives us a negative 168. So this is all replaced by one negative 168. Was there a decimal there? I'm wondering if it was. No, no decimal. So negative 168. And then we got to take this negative 112 and multiply it by 0.83y. So don't let the y scare you. So it's going to be 112, negative 112 multiplied by 0 0.83. We can put the y in once we get this, and it's negative uh, 92.96. So I'm going over here. All of this is negative. And uh, 92.96 is going to be negative. And that parenthesis is gone. And now we have a whole new situation that we got to, you know, to simplify. Come down one. Put the equation here and we have like terms and gabe mentioned this earlier and this is where the like terms come into play so i'm going to go ahead and change colors of those because we're going to combine those two okay now what does that become when we combine them oh we could use google or you could try to do it by hand but for the sake of time we we'll use google <laughs> and uh that's going to be let's see what do we say negative i'm going to bring this over here so i'm not going back and forth i don't want that confusing me and I got these other tools I'm going to tell you about later on. But uh, let's finish the problem off so we can check our work. So that is, what did I say it was? Let's delete all that. So it's negative 92.96, right? They're both Y, so you're going to have to put that, plus 15. 
that yields a negative 77.96. So we have this part turning into, let's highlight that, 77.96. And don't forget Y is there. Okay, we're making progress. Equation's getting smaller and smaller. We're getting closer and closer to Y. Now we gotta use some basic algebra to get Y by itself. What do you do? Well, we know this 168 is negative, right? So we can do the opposite of that because if you do positive, they're gonna subtract out and make zero. So we're gonna say plus, and then not the negative part, but the 168, because that's what we wanna to move to the other side. And the reason we're able to do that because in algebra, whichever change you make to one side equation, that due to the other. So I'm gonna take this change here. This is not really a change, so let me fix all this. This is just a new value. Well, why are you getting confused? The change from above is basically the positive 168. So you get 168 on both sides, right? Turn that red so you can see the change from the above equation to the next iteration. I clicked the wrong thing, there we go. And then what you do to one side, let's copy that, you gotta do it to the other. All right, so uh, a quick way to get most of these documents done is to get comfortable with the short key, uh, the shortcuts. And uh, to copy and paste, you can just click and see what it is. All I'm doing and how I'm moving around so fast is I'll hold control after I highlight what I want and press X for cutting it out, control C for copying it, control V to paste it. So it's a lot better than right clicking if you understand the keyboard. All right, so we got that, but what does this equation look like when things get crossed out? What gets crossed out? Well, we said it already, right? Negative 168 plus the 168, they become zero. So let's strike that out. Cool. So now we have a whole new equation that we're working with. And it is basically this part. Now, I, I should have slowed down and did this right here. So let's do that because we don't have to carry that with us. So what is negative six? This is the easy one. Negative six plus 168. Who knows what that is? You should be able to do that one in your head, right? Anybody in the chat got it? Negative six plus 168. Nobody? Well, if you don't know, what is uh, eight minus six? That's two, right? So it's positive, it's more positive. So that's definitely gonna be 162, okay? We can put 162 here. Okay, a few more steps to go, and then we're ready for simulations and then uh, figure it out. Uh, what else we have to do with the simulations and uh, grades? Because we have a quiz tomorrow, so I want to talk about that. Uh, we get out of here at 120. We're at 105. We got 15 minutes of class left, so let's finish up. All right, so anything multiplied by a letter, any number, it's basically to do it in algebra and get that, num that letter by itself, like Y in this case, you do the reverse of multiplication. You do division. So I'm going to put this in parentheses this in parentheses, like all of that, because I want the negative to go with it. And I would divide by what I don't want, which is this negative, not just 77.6. You want the sign to go with you, but you don't want no negative variables. Take that from here and put it underneath. I'm gonna divide it by that number. Okay? And then what you do to one side, I gotta keep saying that. I told you guys earlier, I'm gonna be saying it all day. This is basically algebra practice. You have to do to the other, so it goes. Okay, so what cancels? Well, we know that these two would divide out. That 77, that negative 77.96 will cross out. And this portion underneath with the division sign, it'll cross out too. And all that's left in that case is just the Y. But now we got a new particular, new weird situation. We gotta divide this, this number out so we can actually make the equation smaller and find out what y is. So to do that, I just highlighted this and I can come over to Google and open the tab and uh, I shouldn't have did it that way because I want to see side by side. The way I'm not flipping tabs. I can put equals that whole thing there, like I just copied, 
hit enter and Google will give me the answer. So that's going to be a negative 2.0. This is 7 behind. This is 7. Let's say negative 2.08. So again, that is a negative 2.08. All right, let's clean it up. And then we still got to go back and find that x, just like the joke said. Except the joke was like, don't ask me to find your x. But we're going to go find x, because we only had a partial solution for x. That's your y. We're at the final steps of this problem. And almost on time, too. Because uh, I might let y'all leave early. Um, we turn this off, and then we're going to say this statement here. Now, in fact, I can take it from here earlier. Where is it at? Now substitute the partial solution x. No, that's that's not it. We're going to take what we found and plug it in here. I didn't type that part, so let me do that. So it's basically now take the value that you found for y is above and substitute this value into the partial solution for x in equation 1. And I'm referring to that highlighted section here, right? Hope nobody forgot about it. So I'm going to take that, come down, and put this right underneath because we're about to work on it. So I say I'm highlighting it because we got to come back to it, class. So we're coming back to it. But all we got to do here is really it comes one step down. And I'll put this here. These two can go away because you this is the partial solution, but I'll leave it in once and then uh, delete that. And we don't need to highlight it anymore. Okay, so we end up with what we end up with when we plug the y in. Remember, the y we found is this one is negative 2.08. So we say parentheses negative 2.08 close parentheses, and to calculate it off for the final answer, that's my get out five minutes, maybe even early, longer than that, because uh, I'm about done with this. So we go back to Google, and we say equals this value. I'll just copy this value for x with this solution in there and put it into Google, and it's negative uh, 0 0.23. So negative final x value is x is equal to a negative, I think, 0 0.23. Okay. So who's coming in the room at this late? I ain't going to worry about it. So the final answer is uh, Rihanna Mars. Who is that? Is that Christian uh, Puentes? He just came at the end of class. Okay. I'm going to come back to that. Need your camera on, you got your camera on, Christian. You got to turn that on, dude. It's hard to know who you are. There, there you go. You got to leave the camera on. We're almost through, though. And check the video so you can get some of this work done. What you mean? I mean. All right. I got you. Okay. So the order pair, right? The final answer is the order pair is, and it's always in the form of X comma Y, right? This was in your problem earlier is and then you just set the format up there what's your x your x is uh negative 0 0.23 and comma space comma and then what is a y that's uh negative 2.08 close parentheses problem is finished now i might dismiss you all but listen you have to finish 2a and 3a and i'm gonna put two links in the chat that you can use to help Mr. You yes can you go up so I can take a picture of the um, work so I can see what I got missing? I, I can, but there's actually, let me see here. There's actually uh, a video, and uh, let me put these links in here for you first. Okay, and then this one. All right, so here we go. 
and then I'm gonna blow this up for you guys. And you said go up. Yeah, yeah, go All up. Right. Toss a stop. Okay, so uh, did everybody get these two links? I want you to try it out. I'm going to show you how to use it again tomorrow. What happened? Why you ain't go up? Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Somebody was at my door. I had to go and find out what was going on. Okay, right there. Right here? Okay. Yeah. Okay, now go back down a little bit. Okay. Right there. Okay, a little more. Keep going. No, no, D damn, Mr. Tyler. Oh, those are just the two problems that you got to do today. Oh, okay. okay, take care, yeah. take those links and get ready to use them tomorrow or try them out tonight. But I think Lisa knows, has seen how to use them. We ran out of time to use them. You just plug in both equations and you can check your work. That was the important part of me showing you those links. Word of the day and everything you need. Uh, I think that's it. It is about to be um, 120, which is when we change periods. So you guys are free to go to get ready for your next period because it starts at 120. And I want you to have a few minutes to stretch your legs, get something to drink, and you know, get the blood flowing. All right. So I'll see you all later. Okay. That you too, Lisa. Thanks for all your support. You're see welcome. you guys later.